So just a few more details about gastrulation. The USMLE really wants you to know that the ectoderm is going to become the brain and spinal cord, the mesoderm, the muscles, the endoderm is your gut tube. Okay, That's at the most basic level. Ectoderm is actually broken into the surface ectoderm, neuroectoderm, and neural crest. Okay, so highest yield is neural crest. Unfortunately, all of this stuff is very memory intensive. You do need to memorize it for step one. Okay, there are more conceptual things, but this is something that you will need to memorize. That the adenohypothesis is the anterior pituitary. Okay, we've got our lens of the eye, our epidermis. All right, and then our parotid sweat and mammary glands are all surface ectoderm. Okay, and Adenohypothesis, also good to remember that that's derived from Rathke's pouch, okay? And our neuroectoderm, this will be our brain and spinal cord, as well as retina and optic nerve. We also have astrocytes, our ependymal cells within the ventricles, our pineal gland, which secretes melatonin. In general, when you hear neuroectoderm, think CNS, okay? And just another thought, this adenohypothesis, which is derived from Rathke's pouch, that's a tumor you can get there called craniopharyngioma, okay? So craniopharyngioma is derived from Rathke's pouch, and sometimes they'll ask, and it's derived from surface ectoderm. So craniopharyngioma is derived from surface ectoderm, okay? And for neural crest, melanocytes are very high yield, and occasionally odontoblasts are mentioned, and chromaffin cells of the adrenal medulla, these are the ones that secrete our catecholamines, and we have parafollicular C cells of the thyroid, which secrete calcitonin, and Schwann cells, which are responsible for myelination of peripheral nerves, whereas oligodendrocytes are actually neuroectoderm, and those are responsible for myelination in the CNS. Okay, so neuroectoderm, don't forget astrocytes, oligodendrocytes, ependymal cells, and neural crest, just remember melanocytes, odontoblasts, okay, bones of the skull, aorticopulmonary septum, so these are different things that you do need to know for the step one. Then we have our mesoderm, which highest yield is, just remember muscle, Okay, and we've got connective tissue, our kidneys, vagina, the adrenal cortex, all right, our cardiovascular structures, but not the aortical pulmonary septum, which was neural crest of the ectoderm, uh, the lymphatics. Okay, so in general, these are important structures to memorize for the step one. In terms of more clinical relevance, there is mesodermal defect. There's a sequence called Vactoral. So V-A-C-T-E-R-L. Okay, so Vactoral. So vertebral defects. Anal atresia. Cardiac defects. Tracheoesophageal fistula. Renal defects. And limb defects. Okay, so Vactoral. Those are all associated with mesoderm. And then we have our endoderm, which highest yield thing you need to remember is that it's the gut tube epithelium. Don't forget that the brain and spinal cord are not derived from endoderm. That's a common mistake. The brain and spinal cord are the neuroectoderm, okay? Anal canal above the pectinate line, whereas below the pectinate line is surface ectoderm. Uh, we also have most of the urethra and the lungs, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, are all derived from endoderm as well. So for errors in organ morphogenesis, agenesis is when an organ does not form due to the fact that the primordial tissue that it comes from was never present. An example could be agenesis of the corpus callosum. In contrast, aplasia is when an organ does not form, but its primordial tissue was present, such as thymic aplasia and DeGeorge syndrome. A deformation occurs after the embryonic period, so the embryonic period is three to eight weeks, that's when we have the susceptibility to teratogens, and it's due to something outside of the fetus. For example, if there are twins, crowding can cause one twin to not develop properly. 
Another example could be uh, deformation of the fetal head during vaginal delivery. Now deformation should be contrasted with disruption, and disruption would be the secondary breakdown of what was a previously normal tissue, such as amniotic band syndrome. Then we have hypoplasia, which is when an organ does not form, but is not complete, such as testicular hypoplasia and Klinefelter syndrome, okay, it's lessened cell growth, whereas aplasia is complete lack of cell growth. A malformation can be caused by a variety of things, but its cause is something that occurs with the developing embryo rather than anything extrinsic to it. It occurs during the embryonic period, usually weeks three to eight, and generally results in a permanent organ disorder. Finally, a sequence error in organ formation occurs when there is a single primary defect, but it affects other organs so that we end up with multiple abnormalities. An example of this is Potter syndrome, where we have a simple renal agenesis, but it can lead to other problems such as clubbed feet and pulmonary hypoplasia. That's because with the renal agenesis, we get decreased fetal urine excretion, which leads to oligohydramnios, that's decreased amniotic fluid, and this decreased amniotic fluid leads to crowding within the amniotic sac, so you get the clubbed feet, and you also get pulmonary hypoplasia because the fetus is reliant on swallowing the amniotic fluid for proper lung development. So as we've discussed, teratogens are most detrimental during weeks three to eight, not weeks zero to three. Alcohol is the most common cause of mental retardation overall. So Down syndrome, most common cause of genetic mental retardation. Fragile X syndrome, second most common cause of genetic mental retardation. But alcohol, the most common cause overall. Fetal alcohol syndrome, we'll talk about in the next slide. Aminoglycosides cause cranial nerve eight toxicity. So this will present as congenital deafness. Lithium causes Epstein's anomaly. That's classically when the tricuspid valve in the right heart develops too far down into the right ventricle. So your right ventricle is very small and your right atrium is very large. Thalidomide causes phocomalia, P-H-O-C-O-M-E-L-I-A. Phocomalia is the medical term for the flipper limbs that, that we see associated with that drug. Vitamin A in excess is known to cause cleft palate, spontaneous abortion, okay? You never give a woman uh, a medication with vitamin A unless she's first given a pregnancy test. So sometimes in the USMLE, they'll tell you a woman's going on isotretinoin for severe acne, and then they'll want to know what you do beforehand, and it's a pregnancy test, okay? Warfarin classically causes hemorrhage, but also bone deformities, okay? Are they like, you know that warfarin can cause bone deformities? And ACE inhibitors slash angiotensin receptor blockers can cause renal damage. Okay, so renal pathology and ACE inhibitors, these are contraindicated during pregnancy. Fetal alcohol syndrome, so in its most minor form, can present with a smooth philtrum, which is a loss of that concavity between the upper lip and the nose. You can also get widely spaced eyes, which is called hypertellerism, uh, or small eye openings. Once again, alcohol is the most common cause of mental retardation. In its most severe form, it can cause holoprosencephaly. So, as we also discussed, holoprosencephaly is seen with Patau syndrome and Sonic the Hedgehog gene mutations, but also seen in very severe fetal alcohol syndrome. And alcohol is the leading cause of congenital malformations in the U.S.